The government has recently responded to our petition to enshrine into law our right to roam and wild camp in national parks, and it's not looking good. It all started back in January when wealthy hedge fund manager and owner of 4,000 acres of Dartmoor National Park, Alex Darwell, took a court case to the High Court disputing the legal definition of open air recreation in the Dartmoor Commons Act 1985. Up until this court case, Dartmoor National Park had been the only place in England and Wales where wild camping was deemed legal. However, the High Court ruled that open air recreation includes walking and riding, but not camping, making camping without permission illegal across England and Wales. Not long after the ruling, the Dartmoor National Park Authority agreed to start paying Darwell and other landowners an undisclosed fee of taxpayer money to grant permission for campers. So this petition was created calling on the government to enshrine into law our right to roam nationwide and wild camp in national parks without the landowner's permission. National parks were created for the enjoyment of the public and we don't think people should be able to own land within national parks anyway and much less restrict public access while taking taxpayer money and farming subsidies as well as a fee for camping permission as in the case of Darwell. Currently, only 8% of England and Wales is accessible to the public, whereas in Scotland, virtually everywhere is accessible to the public. Wild camping without landowners' permission is legal in Scotland, as it is for most of our neighbouring countries in Europe too. What we want is similar access rights to roam across England and Wales, not just in national parks, and for wild camping without landowners' permission to be made legal. Now, with petitions, we need 100,000 signatures for it to be debated in Parliament. But after 10,000 signatures, the government responds. Well, we've screamed up to 34,000 signatures and the government has just issued a response, a clear snub of the public's wishes. This response is straight from the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, and goes as follows. The Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000 provides the public a right of access to large parts of the English countryside, including national parks. There are no plans to change this. Straight up, there are no plans to change this, aka your petition has fallen on deaf ears. If you look at the Countryside and Rights of Way Act, it has provided the public with open access land, but, as mentioned before, this open access land only constitutes 8% of England and Wales. This land isn't evenly distributed, meaning access becomes a postcode lottery. In Kent, for example, only 0.6% of the land is open access, compared to 72% in the Peak District. Open access areas tend to be pretty remote, making access for the 80% of our population who live in towns and cities impossible. It opens with a similar paragraph. The Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000 provides the public a right of access to areas of mountain, moor, heath, down, registered common land and coastal margin in England. There are no plans to change this. Our national parks and areas of outstanding natural beauty play a critical role in improving our health and well-being. Agreed. And we support the recent Landscapes Review's vision of a more beautiful, more biodiverse and more accessible national parks and AOMBs. Okay, so the Landscapes Review referenced here was an independent review conducted in 2018 at the request of the government into whether the protections for national parks and areas of outstanding natural beauty are still fit for purpose. The review was published in 2019. I read all 168 pages of the review and whilst there were a few mentions of making national parks more accessible, it mostly covered budget allocations and opportunities for kids. There was not a single mention of expanding open access areas. It contained no confirmations or proposals to increase our rights to roam, but a vague mention, Proposal 16, to consider investigating whether further open access rights should be established, considered or trialled. Whereas other proposals were firm, precise plans, this one called for a mere investigation rather than direct action. Wasn't investigation the whole point of the review in the first place? In a 168-page document, it was only given three very vague paragraphs. It wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that given the obscure wording of this section in an otherwise heavily detailed document, it will likely be overshadowed and disregarded by the topics given more weight in the review. To prove this, I read the emails between Head Review Lead Julian Glover and Michael Gove, the Secretary of State for Environment and Rural Affairs, in which Julian Glover summarises the main points of the review but doesn't mention increasing access rights or right to roam at all. 
proving it's of little importance. So to quote their support of the recent Landscapes review, when we're talking about rights to roam and wild camp, neither of which are mentioned in the Landscapes review, seems a complete red herring, a classic politician's ruse to answer a different question to the one posed, in the hope of deflecting from the issue at hand, avoiding a genuine answer and lulling you into a false sense of security, thinking your issue's been addressed. On another note, if any changes were to be made to open access rights, or our right to roam, this would mean amendments to the Countryside and Right of Ways Act, which they have said there are no plans to change. The Landscapes Review also quotes Michael Gove saying that the United Kingdom is now among the most nature-depleted nations in the world. Answering why this decline has taken place, the report suggests it's a system of farming subsidies that for decades has rewarded intensification, which is intensely farming land for maximum output, regardless of the environmental consequences. If this is true, it means landowners like Alex Darwell, who received £187,000 of taxpayer money in subsidies in 2021 alone, is receiving this money only to deteriorate and destroy the land. Now, we already know Darwell doesn't care about the land after releasing a flock of pheasants near a protected woodland and putting a rare species of beetle at risk, but it's frightening to learn that this is the situation across the whole country. This next section is all about the Environmental Improvement Plan. It's great that green spaces are being built in urban areas 15 minutes from everyone, but there's a difference between being able to access a small park in a congested city centre and having a right to roam in nature. Another deflecting statement irrelevant to the subject at hand, which is to enshrine into law expanded rights to roam and wild camp. I read the Environmental Improvement Plan and there is no mention of right to roam or expanding access land, but a vague mention of reviewing the maps to open access land on page 252 of the 262 page document. Reviewing maps that is, not expanding open access land. There is nothing in the environmental improvement plan that covers extending rights to roam or wild camp. It's great that more hiking trails are being built as well as other plans, but what we need in this country is a right to roam much like they have in Scotland. We're aware that we must balance the needs of all those who live and work in the countryside with those who visit to ensure that public access brings all the benefits we know it can without a affecting nature recovery and food production or security. Sure, but that doesn't mean much without specifics. Regarding Dartmoor, this is an ongoing matter between the National Park Authority and the landowners concerned. An agreement has been reached in principle that will enable people to continue wild camping in parts of Dartmoor National Park. That is the whole point of this petition. We believe we should have a right to roam everywhere, but especially in national parks, and to camp without the landowner's permission. It's outrageous that Darwell has restricted our rights and in the process managed to siphon taxpayer money into his pocket. This whole response is a classic politician's farce, skirting around the issues without legitimately addressing any concerns. Let's keep signing the petition, perhaps it will be taken more seriously at 100,000 signatures. If not, perhaps another technique will be required. Either way, we must demand that extended rights to roam and wild camp across the country are enshrined into law. There's a fundraiser going round to fund an appeal to the High Court verdict in Dartmoor. I'll link it in the description, but to be honest, it doesn't sit right that the Dartmoor National Park Authority are asking the public to fund this after so readily paying Darwell public money that they could have used for an appeal. 